Hi. So, diversity is something essential to our industry. It brings um, different perspectives, point of view, and seeds creativity above all. And I'm very glad to see this conference bringing this team together, everybody discussing this, and this year especially, the Beyond Gender team bring us lots of different inspiration, right? And beyond misrepresentation of women, which is a very strong uh, and important concept for us to discuss, and he will be discussing this for along the years, we have something else to discuss here about a different group of people who normally we don't discuss in this conference, which is the immigrants. Yeah, I, in a couple hours ago, I was here on the stage doing that um, privilege walk, and, and I didn't expect it to be so emotional. I was re really like mind blown. I was almost breaking apart, kind of falling here uh, in, on, on the stage. And it was very interesting to see the, the different layers of privilege and how they operate. And, and the connection with this presentation was like so perfect because the, the experience, what we're, what we're bringing here is not a, a information about Brazilians and how to hire Brazilians or who are the best Brazilians or it's not that. What we are bringing is a, what we can learn from the Brazilian experience that can teach us and help us understand the idea of privilege. Because there's something very particular on that experience that is, um, that I think I can, I can relate to, and Laura can as well, but I've, I've seen that myself. Being a, a white man in Brazil from a pretty, in a, a kind of wealthy family, middle, upper middle class, you know, I was one of the, the most privileged ones in, in, in the country. And, and then I moved here. And there's a, there's, then all of a sudden I lose a lot of those privileges and, and that difference between what I used to be and what I am and the, having a, a, an upper class, a group of people that know and set the rules is something that I, didn't, I couldn't see before, I'd never experienced before. And that clash that not only uh, that I've experienced, that Laura has experienced and a lot of people that come from other countries have seen as well, t can, can teach us a lot about how to understand and see the things that we wouldn't see otherwise. And this is, this is the theme of this presentation today. So you might think that being an immigrant is already being a minority. However, there are also bias in being a minority. So when I got here six months ago as Chief Strategy Officer of Tribal Worldwide, I started to see uh, different pieces and articles about Brazilians. So is Brazil the new Sweden for US agency recruiters? Awesome. I was here, right? And I've been working in this business for the past 20 years. I worked for 11 agencies. I founded my company when I had 28 years. And this company became a strategic shop reference in Brazil for seven years. I spoke in Ken three times. I got I was twice nominated the planner of the year by the Brazilian market. I'm getting my master's degree from the Berlin School. But you know what? I wasn't on that list. Not me and none of the Brazilian women that I know working abroad. So that list brought 19 dudes and zero women. Actually, it was 20 dudes because there was Donald Trump as well in the list, but I'm kind of ignoring. And it was zero women. And I was thinking, why is that for? How can it be possible to not list one single woman working in the US out of this list? And then one day, I received this picture from a friend of mine or family, I don't know who was it. So there was a kind of the same piece in the main economic newspaper in Brazil. It was featuring 10 people, and guess what? nine men and me. And I felt so ashamed, so ashamed that I decided that I, I was not going to share this with anyone on my social network. Instead, I decided to share this with the feminist groups that I'm part of. And I said, how, what we can do to solve this? So firstly, the main target of this change could be the journalists, because maybe they just don't know the women here, right? That was my hypothesis. So what we decided to do 
we decided to make something very simple, and this is one of the triggers of this whole thing, which is let's create a Google Docs and to ask people to put the name of Brazilian women working abroad. And that's why we created the Find the Women BR project. I had the amazing ambition to get 100 women, a list of 100 women to provide to the journalists. So next time they write a piece, they'll have plenty of options, right? You can have a president, you can have a C-suit, you can have creative, creative director, copywriter, every level that you want. So we decided to make this list, and for my surprise, we have 350 people in this list, in different positions. So it's much more than we thought we were going to find. And I don't know, three or four days after that, BBC discovered this, and in one day, we got what we wanted. So we were in the main media outlets in Brazil. It was great, it was awesome. So I received messages from my science teacher from school. It was great. <laughs> but then uh, we started to think like, there are a few things very simple that can be done to highlight a problem and to solve it. It doesn't have to be so complicated, right? Yeah. I mean, most of the, the simplest changes, uh, that the, the, the big changes start with something very simple, and I was fascinated by what, what Laura uh, did and, and how quickly she raised awareness and, and put those names out there and, and didn't solve the entire problem, but took a giant step with one single move of getting the community together. And, and we were talking in, in about our experience, another part of that problem of coming here. And that's why I felt like maybe that's something that we can tackle as well because of these presentations, the responsibility of getting in front of you is the, 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 the difficulties that come with being a foreigner and the, the stigma that comes from your, the brand that your, your country is from. So stay with me for these for a little second so you know when when i came here it was kind of a, a kind of pretty good reputation in brazil was president of the jury at can that year uh and, but i still had to face a lot of uh things that that i didn't expect images that were not mine but things that were related to what brazilians are expected to be and there are good things and if you when we we ask a lot of people and there are things like oh it's a country with a great passion for craft, amazing energy, they're very passionate, very ambitious, and the ambitious already came with an asterisk, it's good and it's bad, but it's also scarily individualistic, award obsessed and very spoiled because you guys have everything done for you and this is not how this country works. For some reason that thing came way before me and I had to deal with that reputation. And then later, I, I had like generations of Brazilians in my agency as well as an employer. I saw the same thing happen. And I saw people getting there and have to deal with that kind of image, the good and the bad, regardless of who they were. And that, the fascinating part, going back to the beginning, is that all these people, they are part of the, the dominant group in the market. They were the white men uh, from wealthy families that go there. They, they don't have a stigma behind them. They are just like the norm. And when you come, come here and you have to deal with the stigma with an image that is not yours, is from the stereotype that people put you in. It's like, whoa, that's how f people feel. This is scary. And, and, and I think it's a great exercise on empathy and it helps us start to think about people differently and start to relate to their problems by looking at ours, our own. Yeah. So one of the things that we discovered when we were discussing this uh, study with Brazilians, Americans, and people from other countries was that mainly, and especially from the employers and employee point of view, when Brazilians arrive here, there is this sense that nobody is helping them. And at the same time, the employers, they have a different perspective of why they just can't take care of themselves. And this is one of the main clashes that we see from these two different groups. So we have a group of very privileged people coming from another country, discovering that they're not privileged at all when they, they got here. And this group here, that is the group that set all the rules, expecting these people to figure everything out. So one 
And the first insight that we had is that the obligation sense kill the dialogue. So there's no conversation if you take your assumptions of what the other should do prior to the conversation. And this is one of the most important things that happens not only with Brazilians, but with also expats as well. And this is one of the most important things that we discovered why Brazilians, they feel like that. Because this is, uh, this is a quote from Tony Esanal. Uh, he is a recruiter. And he went to Brazil once, and he learned that Brazilians, the creative Brazilians, they live as rock stars in Brazil. And that's true, right? Yeah. That's true. They are famous, makes lots of money, and they're treated like kings. They don't do anything by themselves in terms of the bureaucracy and the paperwork. They have help, secretaries, assistants, and people doing everything for them. So it's not that they don't want to do something. Most of the times, they never did. They, had, they have no idea how to do it, right? And that's one of the main reasons why this sentiment of non-belonging they have when they get here. And I can see that myself, sorry. And you, you could see that yourself. Because when we arrive here in America, we have to figure out so many things from the basics and so many things that are obvious for people who live here, that it's very hard for us to know what we don't know, and at the same time, it's hard for the employers to know what they don't know. So both, both sides, we just don't know what we don't know. So it's hard even to start. So we have no idea what is the social security number, and what is that for? Why should I get one? Really, it's true. I had no idea before. Uh, school, because above everything that I am, I'm also a mother, and I have a seven-year-old, single mom, coming here, having to figure out what is the best school for my son. I know there are awesome schools, but what is the best school for him? And how is the school system? Credit score, that's a good one, <laughs> right? We're going to talk a lot about that today. We talk about a lot about that, yeah. I had no idea. What is that exactly? Healthcare, rent, bank account. So all of this stuff that seems obvious and very basic for someone who was raised here, when someone comes from outside, it's really a big challenge. And the challenge that prevents most of the times this person to be the best in the work. Because uh, the mind of this person is thinking about so many other things that it prevents it to do the best. Yeah, one of the... the, the my favorite parts about this is how this is a microcosm of a, a bigger problem with privilege and, and how these, th there's an overwhelming feeling that um, the non-belonging happens not in the big questions on privilege and, and race and gender and, and, and nationality and language. It happens in the little things. I remember talking to a friend of mine, uh, also Brazilian, uh, that lives in San Francisco. Uh, she is, uh, she's black and she, she tells me, she told me once that, you know what, I can handle the discussions on the merit of, of the, 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 the privilege or not. I can handle all that. What I can't is when I get into a, into a bus and someone just holds their purse closer. Or when I'm going, I'm at a restaurant, I'm going to the, the bathroom, and someone calls me and, and, and makes and, and orders food because they just assume that I'm the waitress because I'm black. Now, this, the, those little things are the most annoying, the most heartbreaking, the, the moments I feel like I don't belong here. I'm not one of, of the rest of them. And I think that that experience helped us see it and helped us kind of clarify how, how this, this goes and, and you know, maybe it will help you guys see that as well. Now we've got some, some, two examples so, so you can see how that operates in, in reality. This took, took different themes and got, talked to uh, foreigners, expat, Brazilian expats coming to America and some, some people on the management side and see how they see the same issue. So this, there's own paperwork, for example. There was one designer that says, if no one helps me figure this crazy paperwork, I can't concentrate on the work I have to do. 
She was like, I have no idea what all any of those things are. They just assume that everyone knows what SSN is. I don't know, even know what it stands for. I can go Google it, but I still don't understand the weight of it, the importance of it, unless someone tells me. And then kind of we, you go talk to an HR manager on the same company that this designer operates. And she said, oh, Brazilians are lazy about getting information and figuring out the practical stuff. Now, they ask for help all the time. From on the, 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 the company side, the person was saying, yeah, no, I, my job is not to do this. This is all the paperwork, these things are that everyone should know. And on the, the, the creative, the, the expat coming, like, you know, I have no ability to even understand to educate myself. I need some help. But that conflict would never allow them to talk. The obligations, as Laura was saying, wouldn't allow them to talk. There's, but there's a flip side of that as well. Kind of these own language, the difficulty with the language. A client, a, a, a big advertiser, kind of a, a, a friend that works at Visa, for example, said that when I, when I arrived here, the intern had better presentation skills than me, and that was frightening. And then, you know, talk to people like Jeff Goodby, and he just wrote, kind of sent him a couple of questions. He wrote back and said, oh, Brazilians are so shy when they get in. You know, they're so charming and they're so, you know, expensive. But when, once they get in here, they feel shy. They don't talk. They think that they cannot present. You guys can. Tell them that they can. They're not but shy, But again, right? this conversation never happened. Yeah, they're not shy. They're just terrified. Yeah. It's not shyness. It's just, oh, my God. And, and, and this is the... the the, the go, goes back to the privilege happens in, in the, the second session that we had here today. A lot of those things happen because people just don't, either don't have the conversation because they don't think that the conversation is important or because they are afraid of the legal implications of having those talks. These things are important. And I'm, I love the fact that we are going beyond gender here, that we are, we are expanding uh, way beyond the, the just the, 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 a very important cause, part of the issue that gave the name of the, this conference that is gender. But we are going, I think we need to go beyond just the kinds of people and we need to think about inclusion and diversity from the recruitment but also from the maintenance and how we allow people to thrive. So we got, we got, took, you know, we, che we cheated and stole from ourselves. We got the, the, the methodology that Laura used to get her, the, the, the find a woman and, and use it to, to research here as well and, and to get some, some insights into this. So it was the same thing. We created this Google Docs and um, spread the link into our networks and asked people to help us to just fulfill those uh, questions, right? And you yeah. see, uh, we will share some numbers with you right now, but next week we will have on slide share the, all of the, resor the results of this uh, uh, research available for everyone. I will ask the 3% conference and CAD to share with everyone the slide share. We, we talked to a bunch of people, like interviews and, and forums, and you know, got help from some of our most inspiring friends in the industry, uh, men and women, big independent global networks, and all people that either are Brazilians or have worked with Brazilians and had experience to, to tell us. And, and we got some interesting, uh, some interesting facts. Now, this is one of the things that I heard from, from a lot of people, but Nick Law from RJ is one of them. Brazilians are conceptually courageous students of creativity. That's an amazing thing, one of the positive parts of the stigma, right? And, and, but at the same time, I heard from an agency MD, like a, a managing director from a, a big agency saying, hey, discrimination and lack of trust is a big problem. Even though I got a college degree from an American university, there was still this sense, that from, sense from employers and colleagues that I didn't quite get the task and the culture. And this is just assumed because I was born in another country and, and I couldn't get it. You know? And they never got, gave me a chance to understand that. And uh, from everyone that we interviewed, especially from the employer point of view, we found something very interesting because the professional culture adjustments and the language barrier are the two things that were present in almost all of the answers, right? However, the paperwork trouble wasn't present in any of the answers that we had. And from the employee's point of view, all the Brazilians that answer our uh, research, we had 71% of people really terrified about the paperwork. 
So this is one of the misalignments that we found in terms of the, um, the process of adjusting to a new country, to a new culture. And also the family's adjustment is something very, very important when the person is coming with the family, right? The partner and the kids and how all of this is going to work together. For example, my son didn't speak any English. He was terrified about school and I had to leave different days to be with him at school. The agency was great, but it was something that I wasn't expecting to be so hard, but it is. For most of the people, it's hard because it's not only about the person who is going to work. It's about the whole package. And, and this, the, the people that answer the, on the, the employer side, on the agency side, that answer those things, they have hired dozens, if not hundreds, of, of Brazilians and people from other nationalities already. Why didn't they know? They simply, this conversation simply never happened. But it was like 71%. It's like almost everyone had that problem. They just, they're totally unaware of it because privilege is an invisible thing. Yeah, and privilege brings us to the inside that you don't know what you don't know. So the first thing is that pay attention to the things that you have no clue about, because probably you find out different things that you should pay more attention to. The other examples is, first, I wish I knew that I must view the credit score. No idea about it. What is credit score, exactly? <laughs> no, I know, that's the reason why I don't have a credit card here. And most of the people, they stay one, two years without having a credit card. Who has a credit card here? Who would be terrified if you had to spend two years without a single credit card all of a sudden? Yeah. That's me now. Yeah, it's me. It happened to me as well. Can you imagine being in this world without a credit card for two years because no one explained how to, how to get one and then when they did in three months you had one? It was that simple? But that's... Awesome when you figure this out, right? Uh, then, even if you speak English and you consider that you speak English very well, that will be a barrier, always. Because of cultural reasons, because of different reasons, it will be a barrier, always. It's hard to deal with that, emotionally and in practical ways. That you must bring cash. This is one of the <laughs> best tips that people gave to me. You must bring cash because you don't have credit. So if you don't have credit and you have to pay like three rents in advance to be able to rent an apartment, how you can do it? So you must bring cash with you. Think all One thing depends trips. on the other, right? Yeah. Think of your business trips and, and how you pay with your credit cards and then you expense and you get the agency to pay you back by the time they have to pay. Imagine if you have no credit card and you, you have to, pay, to finance the agency for a couple months. So those are the small details in daily life that makes people feel they don't belong. So I'm an alien. <laughs> and there's this ambiguity here. Because at the same time that people live in workplace that they feel gives very uh, lots of value to international employees, at the same time, more than a half of them felt at some point mistreated or labeled to be, uh, for being foreign. And that's across the board everybody that we speak to. And for that reason, sometimes it hits directly to the self-esteem of the person and it starts to question their own potential and talent. So 62% of all of the Brazilians that we discussed had this feeling once. And most of the times in the beginning, the first year. The first year is, is always horrible. The hardest one, right? And because, you know, people that have never lived with these, these experience of moving to another country, have to think in another language. If you had any idea how difficult it is to be, to feel dumb for until your English, your language, your mind uh, uh, catches up, you, you, you help these people, you're gonna be, you would all be more, more appreciative and help them feel more comfortable themselves. You know, you know it's what Jeff Gooby was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, it's, what, what was the story that you were telling that, that, that some, with your presentation things, that, and if we get it's like we get upset with our accents. Yeah. Okay, you know, and, and we don't, our English is not good enough. Our I was very, is, is very bad. much intimidated by my own accent, bringing them, and then someone told me, oh my God, keep it, because it, it makes the content so much smart with your accent. 
<laughs> I said, oh my God, I wish someone told me before because I was trying to forge this less accent Point, Pointless that I could. suffering. Uh, so, there, there are a couple, uh, a couple of things that, you know, the practical uh, advices that we can give to people coming, to companies hiring. First is this life-saving co uh, combo. Things that can change the life, really change the life of anyone coming. And it is worth putting on the package on the cost that you're going to, to the money you're going to invest on bringing people. Oh, make sure that you have these th three things. A relocation specialist, an international accountant, and a presentation coach. You give this level of support, you change the life of that poor soul that is coming here to this strange country and having to understand everything all at once. Because in the company, you're not even going to understand the issues. These three people will do, and it will change their lives. I got that, and my experience was much better than, than a bunch of people that didn't. Second group of tips, this is more for the employers and things that they can actually do. First, help them explain, shake them, and say, you need to get your social security on day one, bring them there, show them, guide them, because they're not going to understand how important that is. You have no clue. Second, make them either read these guides or talk to other foreigners, uh, other ex expatriates that, that are here in the country as well, because they're going to give a lot of advice that we cannot document enough. Three, green cards. Everyone looks at green cards for like, yeah, that's a privilege. I'm not gonna give them a green card because that's when they can go to other companies. Especially for people that are coming with an O-1 visa, that is true to a lot of, uh, of our industry. Put that on your process that the moment that they walk in, you're going to start to apply for the green card because these, after three months with an O-1, they cannot travel and your life is gonna be miserable, it's gonna be a, a nightmare, so consider that you're gonna have to do this. And finally, healthcare. The system here makes no sense. It makes no sense for you guys. Imagine for anyone from the outside. You need to help, and I know that legally you can't, but figure that shit out. Find a way to give them, tell, tell them to read this, tell them to talk to another foreigner. And some very practical financial advice. First, taxes. Get them, if you can't say that, tell them to read this. Go get to the max because it's better to, to be frightened a little bit every month and then find out you, you owe a couple hundred dollars, like lots of us. You know, in general, the first year of any expat year, you end up the year broke. So that's why you need to bring money in. But go max so you can get a refund in the end. Health, oh, there's a PPO, HMO. You know what, go with the HMO first until you figure out because you, know, you don't know anyone, any doctor anyway. Go there as, as, a, as a beginning until you feel comfortable with moving. Credit, that's the number one problem that destroys our lives. And you can't, you can't build credit if you don't have credit and there's like an egg and a chicken problem. You know, the, the best tip that I got, buy a car. Go take some of your things, buy, pay 50% up front, car dealers will do anything if you don't, even if you don't have any credit. They're gonna do it, you start to pay it on a monthly basis. In three months, you start to get your, your, your offers, you get a credit card, your life changed. This is not a little thing, guys. This is life. It changes everything. Just but, but that trip, that little tip here kind of changed, changed, changed my life. And lifestyle, you know, you have a life wherever you come from. There's a way of, of spending your money. When you come here, it's a different way. What's expensive in one country is cheap on the other and vice versa. You have to adjust to that lifestyle. And one could think that this is only a Brazilian thing. But after doing this research with Brazilians, we decided to extend it to other friends of ours from other countries. And the results, they are not that different, Brazilians and people from other countries. So the, this, the sentiment that people come to feel when they arrive here is quite the same. So that should be something very interesting to pay attention to. I mean, yeah, the, the, I think the main point here is that diversity is an investment, and I think everyone here would agree with that, and that, you know, it pays off, and, and it, it brings it bring results. But you also need to be aware of the cost that includes not only recruitment, but to, to allow this person to be up and running, to be, to be allowed to thrive. And I think that not only for Brazilians or for expats, but anything related to diversity. We have to start to think about what are, how do we give conditions for these people that are not, do not represent the majority to be their best and, and kick ass and, and use all their talents in, in a way that you, know, that you, can, you can offer some, some support. 
This is a, a heartbreaking line that I, I heard from one HR person. I don't have these problems with engineers that I bring from India. It's like, yeah, but try to bring everyone, all the foreigners be from India and engineers to see what happens. The beauty of diversity is exactly that you're going to bring people that have different skills, but they also come with different inconveniences. The problem, the real problem on anything related to diversity is the inconvenience is when you start to feel like, you know what? Oh, I get all this, but it's too complicated. It's too, too much headache. That's why I feel like, think about this first. Put, plan the cost, plan the things you're gonna need to do because then you have it. Then you can, you can be prepared and they're not an inconvenience. It's just a part of the cost of doing business or bringing people uh, from other countries. And then you can have things like these amazing quotes from the, the main recruiter uh, from one of the best agencies in the world, is Martin Agency. So Katie, Katie wrote to us and said, now, agents should be prepared to provide a comprehensive workshop for international hires. Information about travel, about credit, and, and deep dive into healthcare system. And so all the things we were saying, she was saying that as well. Why? Because it's an amazing agency in a city that needs to work really hard to attract people. So they got really good at that. So it's not that we are inventing the wheel here, no. If you really need to do it, you do it. Guess what? We all need to do it. If we want to be competitive in a global scale, we need to be as good as they are. And we also got another very inspiring um, quote from, from Mike from Anomaly saying, it, I think the most important thing is not bringing, bringing your filters to the table. You're bringing foreigners, you're bringing people from other countries. Let them be who they are and learn and guide them and help them be. Don't try to make them, turn them into Americans. Then you defeat the purpose of bringing them. It's better to have an American, a real American than a fake American. You can, but you can have a real American and a real Brazilian and a real Indian and a real British and, and that's why when you have diversity on, on, on the nationality side. And then we started to think, okay, that was, this was a study about Brazil and we had this uh, 34 people from other countries and to make it very serious, we were trying to make this estimation of how many studies should have to be accomplished to have the same results for all of the countries and all of the countries, right? So we picked 90 countries that attended <laughs> last Ken uh, Lions Festival and we multiplicated by the 30 most important countries. And we end up with the need of create 2,700 new studies to understand all of the countries. Anyone can, can sponsor this and pay the cost for this year? You want to do it? Do you want to help me? <laughs> I don't think so. But guess what? We have good news, okay. right? And the good news is that we found a way to make people feel less what they feel right now. Because uh, we understand that expats, Brazilians, and people from different places, they think that they should work twice to prove that they were capable. But actually, nobody's right and nobody's wrong. It's much more a matter of understanding and be open to have a conversation and be less attached to your assumptions and to the stigmas and be more open to understand the other and to understand and to acknowledge what you don't know, right? If you go to the core of it, and there's one thing that we can solve that have the ripple effect on, on everything else, is the idea of dropping the sense of obligation. If everyone comes to the table feeling, okay, I don't have, you know, the other side doesn't have any obligation towards myself, and they think also that I don't have any obligations to do, and we just have a, a normal conversation about what are the, the difficulties and the scenarios, and we can have that talk. Things work. We are, as have been said many times here today, you know, we are in the communication business. If we cannot communicate ourselves, exactly. we are in trouble. But this alone is a, so, is a way to, instead of having to develop 2,700 different surveys, we can solve this one problem and everything is going to be tackled. And that was it. Thank you very much. Do you have time for questions or is it going to be separate? I don't know. Let's, let's see. Any, any questions here? Any, any thoughts or questions you want to share before? Before I go? All right. One here. I 
I mean, the, the, the car is just one example of one thing. You have to buy, you have to owe money. You have to buy something that you can't have the obligation to pay every month. And the cars is just one that they are so desperate to buy that if you pay a bit, make a big upfront payment, then fine. But it's, it's buy something that you can, you have to pay every month and then, then it's going to start to build. The car is just the best one that, that I found so far. That's what I learned. You have to own money to be able to own more money. Yeah. But it in Brazil, it's the opposite. It's crazy. If it doesn't you make any sense. money, you have less credit. It's you Americans are, are crazy. <laughs> she has a question there. Where? I couldn't hear this. Yeah, there's, I mean, there, there are different things, but what I've seen is that the car is the, the, the one that builds the fastest. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not, I, I only learn one way. So, you know, you guys can share and use Twitter to put that. And, and so, like, let's talk about ways to build credit. <laughs> Yeah. We, we haven't got that far. We just, we try to concentrate on the Brazilian case because we could relate to, but I think this is the beginning that something that we want to expand and see how other countries, we have more, we need more data. We don't have the data on that, but it's, it's, a, it's an important one. The fascinating yeah, but that, thing. But that number of 70, 74% of people from other countries other than Brazil feeling that they felt this they had to work twice to prove that they were talented, probably it reflects this feeling that I am not enough. I have to prove it, so I have to work twice. I have to prove that I'm talented. And sometimes people got thinking about themselves like, why am I here? I shouldn't be here. I am not talented enough to be here because of this judgment. And is it true or is this just a matter of self-esteem? It doesn't matter, right? Because the person shouldn't feel this way. All right, guys, there, there, the, the, the day needs to go on, but we are going to go around, and if you guys want to talk, we're going to be in the back. Thank you very much Thank for you very the attention. Much. Thank you very much. I hope that helped.